Good day to all our viewers and subscribers. Today, I will be your teletor and teachers as I continue the discussion about the main functions of the major organs of the body for science grade 4. I'm teacher Myra Pigabinay from Cabanatuan East Central School. For today's lessons, we are focusing on the functions of the liver, kidneys, stomach, and intestines. At the end of this lesson, the learners are expected to describe the main function of the major organs, communicate that the major organs work together to make the body function properly. For our review, can you identify which major organ is being described in the statement? Number one, this organ is the body's control center, considered as the seat of all thoughts, memories, perceptions, and feelings. If your answer is the brain, you are correct. Number two, this organ provides the body with oxygen from inhaled air to the bloodstream and to exhale carbon dioxide. You are correct, it is the lungs. This organ pumps blood through the blood vessels by repeated rhythmic contractions. You are correct, it is the heart. Congratulations, you learned a lot from our previous discussion. We are ready to move forward to discover the main functions of the liver kidneys, stomach, and intestines. Aside from the heart and lungs, other major organs work together to make sure that the transportation of oxygen and nutrients to the rest of the body are possible and continuous, on which this process is vital for the body to stay healthy and to function properly. Let's start with the liver. The liver is the largest gland and largest internal organ in the human body. It lies on the right-hand side of your abdominal cavity. The liver has many jobs, but here are its most essential functions. First, your liver filters out harmful substances known as toxins. When you eat something, your blood passes through your liver before it is sent to the rest of your body. Your liver takes out the important nutrients and gives them back to your body. But it flushes out the toxins by sending them out of your body through your urine or poop. Second, the liver produces a greenish-yellow liquid called bile and stored in the gallbladder. This bile aids the digestion of lipids or fats. Third, the liver helps to manage blood sugar helping to keep blood sugar stable. When you eat food that contains carbohydrates like rice and bread, your liver breaks down those carbohydrates into sugar known as glucose. The glucose stored in your liver is called glycogen. Malfunctioning of the liver can lead to diabetes. The fourth is, the liver regulates blood clotting. And the fifth, the liver resists infections by making immune factors and removing bacteria from the bloodstream. Another organ that takes away harmful waste of our body is the kidneys. Your kidneys are the tubing-shaped organs, each about the size of your fist. The right kidney is slightly lower than the left to accommodate the liver. Each of your kidneys contain more than 1 million nephrons. Are you wondering how these kidneys function? Can you imagine a lot of waste pile up in your house? You probably set them out and someone takes them away. Your cells do something similar. They push their waste out of your blood and carries them away. The kidneys filter the blood as many as 400 times a day. More than 1 million tiny filters inside the kidneys remove the waste. These filters called nephrons, they are so small. You can see them only with a high-powered microscope. But how this waste gets into your blood? Remember, your blood delivers nutrients to your body and carries away unwanted carbon dioxide and waste products. All the blood in your body passes through the kidneys several times a day to be cleaned. That is why the number one function of the kidney is to remove waste products and excess fluid from the body. These waste products and excess fluid are removed through the urine. The second function is to regulate the body's salt, potassium, and acid content, which is critically performed by the kidneys. Through the kidneys, our body can maintain the right amount of fluids and minerals. The third function is to release hormones that regulate blood pressure. The fourth is to control the production of red blood cells. The fifth is to produce an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong, healthy bones. In summary, the hormones produced by the kidneys affect the function of other organs. For example, a hormone produced by the kidneys that stimulates red blood cell production 
is happening inside the center cavity of the most bones. Other hormones produced by the kidneys help regulate blood pressure and control calcium metabolism. That's it for a while. We will take a short break and when we come back, I will continue on the functions of the stomach and intestines. We are back, our dearest viewers. Let us now continue our discussions. To make the body function properly, we need to keep it strong and healthy by getting nutrients from the food that we eat. The food that we eat gives us the energy to study and play. Without food, the other parts of the body like bones and muscles and the internal organs do not have the energy to function. However, before our body can make use of any food that has been eaten, it must be broken down into liquid form or into smaller nutrients. The process by which food is broken down into nutrients is called digestion. In digestion, the stomach is one of the most important organs that helps to digest food. The stomach is a bean shape sac located behind the lower ribs. It is a hollow organ or container that holds food while it is being mixed with stomach enzymes. These enzymes continue the process of breaking down food into usable form. As it secretes acid and enzymes, the stomach muscles contract in a process called peristalsis to mix the food with the acid and enzymes. Cells in the lining of the stomach secretes a strong acid. This acid also works to kill harmful microbes that may have made their way into the body along with food and drink. The stomach has three main functions. These are temporary storage for food, which passes from the esophagus to the stomach, where it is held for two hours or longer. Mixing and breaking down of food by contraction and relaxation of the muscle layers in the stomach. And digestion of food. But digestion never stops and completed in the stomach. When the contents of the stomach are processed enough, they are released into the small intestine. By the time food reaches your small intestine, it has already been broken up and mushed into liquid by your stomach. Each day, your small intestine receives between 1 and 3 gallons or 6 to 12 liters of this liquid. The small intestine carries out most of the digestive process, absorbing almost all the nutrients you get from food into your bloodstream. The walls of the small intestine make digestive juices or enzymes that work together with enzymes from the liver and other glands. It is about 2.5 cm wide and 7 m long called tube where food is finally digested and absorbed. It also contains digestive juices and other enzymes that help break the food into nutrients. The small intestine is having huge absorptive surface area packed into a relatively small space because of its bilan. These are the folds form numerous tiny projections which stick out into the open space inside your small intestine and are covered with cells that help absorb nutrients from the food that passes through. And the microvilli, these are the tiny hair-like structures around the villi. This helps increase the surface of each individual cell of villi, meaning that each cell can absorb more nutrients. The small intestine is the part of the intestines where 90% of the digestion and absorption of the food occurs, the other 10% taking place in the stomach and large intestine. Final digestion takes place in the small intestine. The nutrients are then absorbed by the small intestine then go into your bloodstream. The blood carries these nutrients to the different parts of the body. Considering this, we could say that the main function of the small intestine are to complete digestion of food and to absorb nutrients and minerals from it. The other part of your intestine is the large intestine. Your large intestine is about 5 feet or 1.5 meters long. The large intestine is much broader than the small intestine and takes much straighter path through your belly or abdomen. The purpose of the large intestine is to absorb water and salts from the material that has not been digested as food and get rid of any waste products left over. By the time food mixed with digestive juices reaches your large intestine, most digestion and absorption has already taken place. What's left is mainly fiber, or plant matter, which takes a long time to digest. Dead cells shed from the lining of your intestines, salt, 
bile pigments on which give this digested matter its color and water. In the large intestine, bacteria feeds on this mixture. This helpful bacteria produce valuable vitamins that are absorbed into your blood and they also help digest fiber. The main function of the large intestine is to absorb water and salts from the material that has not been digested as food and get rid of any waste products left over. These three major organs, the stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, are working together to convert the food into nutrients that our body needs to function properly. While the liver works with these organs to take out the important nutrients from the bloodstream and gives them back to your body, and it flushes out the toxins by sending out from your body through your poop. Then the kidneys filters the blood, remove its waste product and the excess fluid through your urine. Let us proceed to our enrichment activity. Let us read the following statement and identify the major organs hidden in the jumbled words. Number one, this organ absorbs water and salts from the material that has not been digested as food and get rid of any waste products left over. The answer is large intestine. Number two, it is responsible with mixing and breaking down of food by contraction and relaxation of the muscle layers on it. The answer is stomach. Number three, its main function is to complete the digestion of food and to absorb nutrients from the digested food. The answer is small intestine. Number four, it filters out the harmful substances known as toxins inside the body. The answer is liver. Number five, we remove waste products and excess fluid from the body. The answer is kidneys. That would be the end of the second part of our lesson. I hope you will join me again on the next episode of Teleter Ann as we will end this three-part lesson about the major organs of the human body. This is teacher Myra Pigabinay from Cabanatu and East Central School. Always remember that understanding the function of our body is a first step to keep it healthy. Keep safe everyone!